Hey man, hey man, come get in the shot so we can get going. Cool, cool, let's go. Oh man, the auto exposure settings are going nuts. That's your problem. Let me know when you've got it right. Yeah, just, just give me a minute. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are talking about a very serious topic that has great effect on the world today as we know it. Auto exposure modes on the Canon C70. Auto gain, auto ISO, we got it. And we will talk about all the quirks and when you can and can't use these modes right after the three seconds it takes you to hit the subscribe button. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm a videographer, editor, and all around entertainment technician in downtown Toronto. I've had the C70 since it came out and she is fantastic, but sometimes she can be a little quirky. This camera added auto ISO, something that has not been in Canon cinema cameras before, but has long been a staple in DSLR and mirrorless cameras. It works as you would expect. You can turn it on by popping open the menu and heading to the second page of the camera setup menu and switching ISO gain mode from manual to automatic. You can also set it as a custom button. Do it the fast way using the trick in last week's video. Hold the menu button and press the button that you want to set a function to, and then scroll to ISO gain mode. The quirk is that auto ISO does not work in C-Log recording formats and does not work in slow and fast mode. Modes. It also doesn't seem to have as fleshed out of an algorithm as on the R cameras, but otherwise does a great job of getting proper exposure. You can set a limit though so that the auto ISO doesn't get too carried away in extreme situations. On the bottom of the second page in the camera setup menu, there is a limit for the auto mode option. Another auto exposure setting that the C70 has is auto iris. People coming from the mirrorless world probably won't be used to this, but it is more common in cinema cameras. A push to auto iris button comes default on the camera right underneath where your thumb would normally sit, and if you hold this button it will automatically adjust your aperture to expose the image. If you tap the button, it will do the same, but it might not get you all the way there because hitting the button isn't a snapshot, but rather holding the button keeps the camera in auto iris mode. Personally, I set a button to toggle on and off auto iris instead so that when I hit a button, it locks into auto iris mode. That way I can quickly adjust the f-stop to automatic exposure by tapping it twice or lock into auto iris mode, which in some situations is a less jarring way of automatically adjusting exposure. Auto iris is also available in more modes. It can be used when recording in C-Log modes, but can't be used in slow and fast mode. Auto iris doesn't seem to be available on certain lenses as well. When I threw a 24 millimeter f2.8 EFS lens on the camera, auto iris wouldn't function. However, it seems to work with all my other lenses, including other budget EFS lenses that I had in my collection. So your mileage may vary if you are adapting glass. There are also another few options that will have an effect on your auto exposure experience. In the camera setup menu on page three, there are three options, light metering, auto exposure shift, and auto exposure response. In light metering, there are three options, backlight, standard, and spotlight. Standard is suitable in most situations, as you would expect. Backlight can be useful when your scene or subject is backlit, and spotlight is useful when only a portion of your scene is lit, or for instance, when somebody is lit with a spotlight. AE shift allows you to shift what the auto exposure mode thinks is exposed, up or down two stops and quarter stop increments. AE response offers three options, high, normal, and low, and this is how reactive the camera's auto exposure is. So, is the auto exposure on the camera any good? Well, out of any Canon cinema camera, you figure that this is the one that will have the automatic modes used the most, and for the most part, they function pretty good. The camera does a really great job of measuring and adjusting exposure, and does an excellent job of exposing in automatic modes. And if you are coming from the mirrorless world, or have never really used auto iris, it might just change the way that you use auto exposure modes if you rely on them. It would be nice to be able to use auto ISO in C-Log recording modes, but in a lot of cases, that would ruin the point of recording in C-Log for highest dynamic range, since you would be flipping around ISO values and not getting the ideal results, so I get it. There is a bug, however, in the current firmware version using auto ISO with variable aperture RF lenses where the auto exposure gets locked at the wrong values. I go over it in the video linked above. If you like these videos, please subscribe to the channel, or if you have any questions, drop them down below. Have a good one. All right, man, I got to figure it out. Come on back. Come on, let's go.